Cue maniacal insurance laughter. <laughs> Finally, I got a hand on this insurance money here. Now we're going to have fun with a patient here. Oh, Gerard, it's him again. Well, it's 9.20 in the morning, West Coast time, for a Wednesday, the 20th of February, 2024. So, poor Bo, the fifth column, stuck in California. Hypothetically speaking, of course, he stepped off the tarmac. Something hit him upside the ear. Lobbed off an ear, which hasn't happened. But we're using this for an example for the insurance. <laughs> oh, yes. So now the poor man is in the hospital getting his ear attached. Specialist charges. Are they, are they not contracted with this insurance? And if he's totally out of area, which Florida and California are definitely out of area. <laughs> many, many, many. But what if I? How dare you insinuate that to me? I am a California native. What the hell's going on with me these days? Let's just see. I'm from the Antelope Valley. I used to be from the San Fernando Valley. My name is the Weaver John C. <laughs> Uh, you're going to be picking on me now. Let's see if I have insurance for this. Well, I don't have the blues. I don't have the shield or the cross. I have the Kaiser. <laughs> so, if I have the Kaiser, what would happen to me? Well, am I in the Antelope Valley next to the San Fernando Valley? Well, things happen there, don't they? Shall we dispense with the personality? <laughs> oh, hi, guys. What? Some guy came in here wigged out on me? Oh, good lord. It's been happening more and more these days. Okay, so you're sent off to home, and now you got bills to pay, Bill, on this one. You're going to be arguing with your insurance company on this one for a while. Until you come to the conclusion, you owe, period. You had an out-of-area emergency, you're going to be paying out of, out of pocket at this point. If it was in-network, maybe connected up, you'd be lucky enough. Maybe in the state of Florida, you'd be lucky enough. Out here in California, out-of-area costs, out-of-area emergencies, and then customer unusual, even for the HMOs, would have to deal with that. Now, granted, I had been in insurance... Worked for an insurance company for several years, working benefits and eligibility, and then claims on the HMO and PPO side. I worked with a cross before they got swallowed over by East Coast. But during that time, I would have told you what your benefits would be regarding an HMO situation and a PPO situation. So that knowledge is old, dusty, musty. I don't know what the new ranks, regulations, and the coverage at this point. If they're still the same, well, then it's something I could be familiar with. But I'm saying what old and dusty and musty information I have. So bear with me on this one. Let's just say if I was still living it back in the San Fernando Valley, boys and girls, shall we go back over to the Google Maps one more time? And you look at the San Fernando Valley. Nice, big, huge, flat area. Oh, dear. Let's just say I'm visiting back from my old area from Manila Valley into my own home turf. I get off the train. Oops, something hit me. My back is hurting. I got protrusions happening at this point. Oh, good grief. Where the hell do I go? Now, because I have Kaiser. I got Kaiser. Nothing wrong with Kaiser. Uh, Kaiser will get me treated at a hospital. Stabilized. If they are contracted with the Kaiser organization, I shouldn't be having problems concerning about the bills, not just yet. But if I'm serious enough to merit hospitalization right there, and if they could stabilize me enough, maybe they could transport me over to a nearby Kaiser facility. As I said before, oh, let's go and Woodman. Or 
Fresco and Woodman. Uh, yeah, I said the Twilight Zone down shower. So what I'm looking for right now, getting past the vent and some ball of the area. I'm looking for my own hunting grounds of Fresco and Woodman area. Grow and moan if you must. I would if I were you. They changed the hospital a great deal over the past several years. We used to have two round towers. If I could use Google Earth, I could look at the old place, what it looks like. But now these days, it's just plain out ugly. I miss their round towers, but they can only structurally retrofit those damn things after the 94 quake. So I no longer recognize the place on Roscoe and Woodman area. But that would be the nearest Kaiser facility in the mid to east section of the San Fernando Valley. I will be transported probably from a hospital all the way over to them, probably by helicopter or something like that. And I will probably have to negotiate what's going on with Kaiser when I get the bills after I get stabilized and I've been sent home and get the paperwork. I'm lucky in that aspect. If I had the cross. Cross was connected to several hospitals we had out here, not to mention the trauma network out here. But let's just say if, or most of the major insurance companies, let's just say if one of the hospitals I got transported to didn't have any contracting, I would be responsible for the out of area and out of network coverage at this point over here. Now, I know I started in the other video talking about Canada and then talked about ours because I wanted to get a compare and contrast what I understand about the socialized medicine that they have up there in Canada next to our system here. Our insurance companies, convoluted and screwed up as they are, and market-based, they are for profit. They are for profit. They're not community-based. They are not supported by public funding. They got corporate sponsorships, but mostly they get it out of their damn patients. We've had hospitals, doctor's offices collapse over the past, oh God, what was it, four or five decades because patients couldn't pay the bills. Some of the patients came in were indigent. They were off the street. They probably came from places, even if you worked, you didn't have the medical insurance coverage. And they had something drastically. They had to depend upon a county system. And they didn't pay that much to the hospital for it. If they had Medi-Cal, they were screwed. They could get basic medical, uh, medical services, but not specific enough. Until people started screaming and yelling and complaining to everybody about it. Things changing in the medical insurance company, not just for the best, but maintaining I can't stand a new medical service. They changed a hell of a lot. They took out the towers, and now they got this two-dimensional flat bang here. It just it scares the hell out of me, and, and it upsets me a great deal, because there are certain landmarks I used a great deal. But Kaiser had to go through changes. Not that I liked it in the first place, but they widened out things anyway. But all for the patient's benefit. Hey, you still got a Yoshinoya in the area. Cool. I miss Yoshinoya. But this is America. This is in Canada. Canada, socialized medicines. How's your writing arm there, Bo? And the art, artist in recovery. Shout out to you, my friend. Socialized medicine requires bureaucracy. An example for that was a story that I was trying to tell you about, and I got sidetracked a great deal in this one. That when a doctor gets burned out because of the medicine, because of the bureaucracy she's in, she's leaving it and leaving her patients, and it's killing her on that one. But she was also having her health affected by it, mental and physical. She had to leave. You have a certain section in Canada, Alberta, was opting out of a federal pharmacare because of a higher cost for medications, including for insulin and other things. 
that patients could no longer afford. Therefore, Alberta was coming up with her own initiatives for funding. Trying to make it a lot cheaper for the patients these days. If that wasn't bad enough, that is an OMG. I definitely need to count on the 10 o'clock news on this one here because I need to see what the hell's going on. I just had a news flash from Huffington Post. McConnell stepping down as Senate Majority. Actually, yeah, Senate Majority Leader for the Republican. Breaking news is kicking in. I'm turning on CNN. I can just get my damn volume up. He's burnt. He's burnt. And he's just been. that accompanies the grieving process. Perhaps it is God's way of reminding you of your own life's journey to reprioritize the impact of the world that we will all inevitably leave behind. I turned 82 last week. <clears throat> the end of my contributions closer than I'd prefer. My career in the United States Senate began amidst the Reagan Revolution. The truth is, when I got here, I was just happy if anybody remembered my name. President Reagan called me Mitch O'Donnell. Close enough, I thought. My life my wife Elaine and I got married on President Reagan's birthday, February 6th. It's probably not the most romantic thing to admit, but Reagan meant a lot to both of us. For 31 years, Elaine has been the love of my life, and I'm eternally grateful to have her by my side. I think back to my first days in the Senate with deep appreciation for the time that helped shape my view of the world. I'm unconflicted about the good within our country and the irreplaceable role we play as the leader of the free world. It's why I worked so hard to get the National Security Package passed earlier this month. Believe me, I know the politics within my party at this particular moment in time. I have many faults. This understanding of politics is not one of them. That said, I believe more strongly than ever that America's global leadership is essential to preserving the 
and shining city on a hill that Ronald Reagan discussed. As long as I'm growing breath on this earth, I will defend American exceptionalism. So as I've been thinking about when I would deliver some news to the Senate, I always imagined a moment when I had total clarity and peace about the sunset of my work. A moment when I'm certain I have helped preserve the ideals I so strongly believe. That day arrived today. My goals when I was narrowly elected to the Senate back in 1984 were fairly modest. Do a good job for the people of Kentucky and convince them that by doing so they might rehire me for a second term. That was it. That was the plan. You would have told me 40 years later that I would stand before you as the longest serving Senate leader in American history. Frankly, I would have thought you'd lost your mind. I have the honor of representing Kentucky in the Senate longer than anyone else in our state's history. I just never could have imagined, never could have imagined that happening when I arrived here in 1984 at 42. I'm filled with heartfelt gratitude and humility for the opportunity. But now it's 2024. I'm now 82. As Ecclesiastes Estes tells us, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. To serve Kentucky in the Senate has been the honor of my life. To lead my Republican colleagues has been the highest privilege. But one of life's most underappreciated talents is to know when it's time to move on to life's next chapter. So I stand before you today, Mr. President, and my colleagues say this will be my last term as Republican C-SPAN leader. C-SPAN is not federally funded. I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. However, I'll complete my job. My colleagues have given me until we select a new leader in November. They take the helm next January. I'll finish the job the people of Kentucky hired me to do as well, albeit from a different seat. And I'm actually looking forward to that. So it's time for me to think about another season. I love the Senate. It's been my life. There may be more distinguished members of this body throughout. Oh, shit. No, 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 no. With any more admiration for the Senate. After all this time, I still got a thrill walking into the Capitol, and especially on this venerable floor, knowing that we, each of us have the honor to represent our states and do the important work of our country. But Father Time remains undefeated. I'm no longer the young man sitting in the back hoping colleagues would remember my name. It's time for the next generation of leadership. As Henry Clay said in this very body in 1850, the Constitution of the United States was not made merely for the generation that then existed, but for posterity, unlimited, undefined, endless, perpetual posterity. So time rolls on be a new custodian of this great institution next year. I'm surprised you know I intend to turn this job over to a Republican majority leader. I have full confidence.
confidence in my conference to choose my replacement and lead our country forward. There'll be other times to reminisce. I'm immensely proud of the accomplishments I've played some role in obtaining for the American people. Today is not the day to discuss all of that, because as I said earlier, I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. There are many challenges we must meet to deliver for the American people, and each will have my full effort and attention. I still have enough gas in my tank to thoroughly disappoint my critics, and I intend to do so with all the enthusiasm with which they've become accustomed. <laughs> so to my colleagues, thank you for entrusting me with our success. It's been an honor to work with each of you. There'll be plenty of time to express my gratitude in greater detail as I sprint towards the finish line, which is now in sight. Okay. Which is now in sight. Uh, I want to bring in Manu Raju, who is there and has covered uh, Mitch McConnell. Maybe almost as long as I have, but um, you, you, the finish line is way further uh, away from your vision <laughs> than, than mine, uh, Manu. Uh, but the fact that he said, I still have enough gas in my tank to disappoint my critics, uh, and I tend to do that with enthusiasm, the enthusiasm that they've been accustomed to. That was just one of the, the sort of turns of phrase that encaptured uh, and encapsulated Manu. Uh, okay, I was going to be talking about insurance, but now this is going to be switching things around. Next video on this one, we'll talk about the insurance and everything else. I was going to talk about Canada shortly, but this one's got to be got to be earmarked.